Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know I love to interview experts. And one of my favorite experts is a good friend, Pat Dewar. We've known each other for now 15 years. Can you, Can you believe, believe that? that? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, you are a guru on increasing revenue, specifically for s small businesses. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's, it is really funny because you were the one to start me in media years ago and it was kind of that you know pat you have a face for radio well no, she's, <laughs> he said you, you you got you know you ought to do a radio show and that not, led to i, I know you did you, 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 you thought it really loud but the point is is that you you gave me this this idea and ideas are the thing that i think people are needing more now than ever before Yes. open ideas yes so thank you well let's talk about uh, your business because during the pandemic like like all of us you were impacted you were telling me off the air where were you when when it hit in marquette michigan uh, i was on a, a five-day run of five different cities throughout uh michigan and and uh that that area and wisconsin and all that and it was fun I, mean, I look forward to it i love to travel i've been to all 50 states in the last uh, uh several years uh, uh, love it and just like that we got an email we're bringing it home today yes and just like and 48 hours later i'm doing a six-hour webinar basically teaching the same content i was teaching on monday yes only instead of it being live it's Memorex. So, um, you know, I, I have a, a company, you have a company. Uh, was there ever a moment where you kind of freaked out and said, oh my goodness, I'm a speaker, I'm a trainer, and I can't, I can't travel? <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> Not only did I do it, but I have a bunch of other speaker friends and they all were like, oh my God, we're right. going to have to do webinars. There's no way to read the energy in the people. <laughs> we don't know if anybody's even listening. It's like all we hear is crickets. Right. It's difficult, isn't it? It was weird. Yes. And you know what, though? When you make the shift, it's it's like you do all the same stuff. You just have to kind of imagine that the response is there. And you can't derive your energy off of their energy. And and a lot of businesses need to move to exactly the format. You you do these podcasts and you've got to get your voice. you got to get your story told. And I was thinking about this earlier, the number of people that listen to podcasts mm -hmm. today and they're by choice. It's not being shoved in front of them. Right. It's that they go seek out the information they want. And I think brilliant because the power of that is you've got the influence into a community that could be in the millions. And there are tons of, I mean, yes, when you were with the networks here, Think about, you had so much impact, you had a certain percentage of the audience, but once they went above a thousand channels, right. ish, right. now all of a sudden you're just one of a blip, you might catch them. But here, you're pushing the information. Key marketing tool. Yes. How are you sending your message into the marketplace to your ideal client base? big thing and there's so much fear we were all kind of ah! yes let's talk about your book uh, best-selling book strength-based marketing what business coaches and marketing experts won't tell you well let's tell them something if, they, if you had to take one or two tips from the book what would you give them you know one of the things that I would encourage you to do is realize that right now people are freezing and they're wanting to do things the old way and they 
they don't know what they don't know. And I think, oh my gosh, at this point is the one time in your life when you want to say, I will take action. Information with implementation creates transformation. Without action, nothing happens. And so I encourage you to look for people that you work with that serve the people that you want to serve. They, they call them joint ventures, but it's not necessarily a financial joint venture like a, a business proposition. It's more of just looking at your top 20% of your clients and then say, who feeds them? Who are their um, uh, vendors? Oh, well, how can I meet those vendors? Because they're probably serving yes. the same clientele right now. Brilliant. The other thing I just mentioned, oh, what are you doing to give send your message out? Do you even, have you ever really identified? You know, a lot of people don't identify what is your unique service proposition. I mean, if I was to ask you, what's your unique service proposition, what would you say? I say that we're an all journalist PR firm. So th that, that instantly separates me from other PR firms. And, and now the, the trouble with my business is we've gotten so into broadcasting, which is what we're in now. Um, I, I, I'm, it's difficult to lead. Do I lead with the broadcast or do I lead with the fact that we can get you on Fox and CNN? <laughs> I, well, and, and those are tears. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I look at, at what do I do? I, I, I teach, uh, marketing practices. I mean, I literally increase revenue and in businesses in record time, like 90 days. And it's just something that I'm all, fo I'm really focused on. What are the, the four or five areas that we could do right now? Yes. Does your message match? Is your message consistent? Are you creating a system for referrals? But these are the things that a lot of people, they're freezing right now. They're doing it the way that they've always done it. They, they literally don't know what they don't know and they think they they're that we're going to go back to something no no no. this is a new normal yes well pat is an amazing speaker so charismatic has a, a way of connecting with his audiences uh, that I, I i've never seen before let's roll a little clip of pat speaking counterintuitive yeah 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 well, actually, the reason that uh, it was so uncomfortable was because the way our minds are wired. What you believe about you is all made up, and you're the author. Have you always held the pen? Have you always held the pen? Think about that for a second. Well, gee, thanks. Was that supposed to be constructive criticism? Because I'm looking for the upside, the coaching of that one, right? Yeah, no. Uh, he was just trying to say, look, if you stay the way you are, you'll stay where you are. All I could think was, wow, I've never been called an idiot so officially in all my life. <laughs> I'll send you an invitation to my graduation was all I could think after that. How many of you would sit there and react that way? Just, dude, no way. Uh -uh, I'll show you. When you became a manager, somebody literally said, hey, man, uh, I expect you to know this stuff. Or how many of you have expected yourself to know leadership principles as soon as you became a leader? Have any of you ever experienced that? Because see, we don't, we don't control people anymore. Do you guys get that? How many people do we actually control? Just the one. And the next semester, I went from a 1.99 to a 3.25 in one semester. Never had to worry about my grades again. A couple of years later, got my BS degree. <laughs> the educated idiots. What does an educa educated idiot do that makes them ineffective in the workplace? What do they do? Shout it out. Wow. Well, one of the things that really uh, hits home with me is that you're a kind coach. And I think anytime you're, you're sitting in the audience, it, you can make a judgment and say, do I like this guy? Do I want to bring this person into my company to train my team? And you're just a really nice guy. Well, that goes a long way, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've met people that are, you know, Thor in, in the, the uh, speaking industry. And, and I always think, you know, they, they polarize people. But I guess what I've always figured is that, you know, my job is to mentor leaders 
to activate their power so they can create their destiny. When I, I think of the one thing, and I always start to do this to my coaching clients, I look at what's their internal motivational gift. What's the one thing that if they tapped into, everything in their world would shift. You know, when I was 40, I saw, I did a little assessment, a little, you know, seven questions, thought it was useless. Said so teaching was my internal motivation. I, my first thought was, I'm not smart enough to teach. Limiting belief. Yes. And just like on the video, that was my day one of college. 99% of the rest of freshmen are placed above. I'm like, whoa, really? Thanks. But when you eliminate the limiting belief, which is one of the things that people are, are being held back by right now, you confront it with the adult truth, the present truth, not the child truth that wrote it. And just like that, everything changes. So I, go, I went, okay. So I offered it. I went out and I started offering my teaching. And within six months, I'm leading a three-day event on how to process pain, how to find your purpose, your passion. I did that for 10 years, 13 times a year. It's why I still teach. It's because I know that what can come out of that gift can change lives, can change businesses, can change leaders. Yes. So we've, thank you. We've got some, um, uh, some still photographs of you speaking and connecting with audiences. Uh, for the people watching this right now who say, well, I could never speak. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a wallflower. I mean, have you always been gregarious? And, and did, did you have to learn how to, to I had to speak? learn. I, I really sucked. I, my manager said, uh, Pat, um, I just want you to know you have no charisma. <laughs> Well, I gee, mean, thank you very much. That was on fun. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing was is that I had no charisma in the workplace because I was, I was using my gift outside. Mm. And I said, you know what? I kind of laughed and I said, you have two guys on, my, on your team that have been in my workshop on the weekend. He said, if you're different over there than you are here, how do you, I get that guy here? And I went, let me teach the next, next product. And so a lot of professionals, they're just not even using their own gift in the workplace and uh the the one it's really funny but there's one question that every that every person that has to present anything should ask right before they get on the you know front of mic what do these people need to know right now because it gets it it shifts the mind onto what needs to be delivered not on who's delivering it yes and you, when you speak, I know that your speeches are not cookie cutter. It's, it's, it's not, you know, you're, uh, you're not giving the exact same speech each time because you're reading the room and adjusting to, to their energy. And what, what do they need right now? Do they need an exercise? Do they need another story? It's, it's amazing how doing close to 206 hour workshops around the country over the last five years as a, in all 50 states uh, it has been so such a hyper training on reading very quickly where are they what are they doing what do they need and then adapting and a lot of times you're using as you know i mean we we talked about this years ago when you used to go out and spend you know three times a day talking somewhere in the universe and i think yeah i still remember that you know it's not canned but it does use a lot of the same content how do i make sure that i i really and this is the right word for it love these people enough to meet them where they're at mm. and then and then try to activate people so many people never take action that's so powerful we're almost out of time for this segment i know you have an offer for for our viewers what, what do you want to give you, them i appreciate that jeff it, it, it's this i think right now is a time period when if you're a business over your professional if you're trying to grow your business we're coming out of this lockdown and you need ideas you need tools, you need templates. And so uh, my book, Strength Based Marketing, is, uh, is all designed around that. And uh, if you contact me I'm, you know, at my email, I am me, whatever, and say free book, uh, I'll give you the book. Not PDF, I'll, I'll send you an email, uh, a uh, signed copy. And then there'll be some other additional things in there. Uh, access to my website, do or 10kbusinessstrategies.com. I will give you those things if you'll take care of the shipping, five bucks, no big deal. And cause I want you to have some ideas. And then if you do the material, if you start to take some actions and you need more then talk to me, but otherwise I just want to make sure you have the tools 
to really make the difference. And I, I started a Facebook group, uh, Strength Based Marketing. Let's put that Facebook page up because it's a very vibrant group and there's a lot of interaction. Um, yeah, tell me why you started it. Well, so much of it is where are the people that you want to serve? And they're in social media. It's we listen to podcasts, we read books. And so, so much of what I've been trying to do is just find ways to give additional fresh ideas because again, it goes back to, we don't know what we don't know. And we're inundated with information. I mean, there's so many really great uh, people out there to listen to, but that can be a problem too. And so just begin to dip in, dip your toe in the, in the water and begin to just sample it and see what works for you. And so that's why I wanted to create it a, a, a place for great minds to come together. Yes. Wow, this has been wonderful. Um, we're going to put your website up so people can plug in. It's doer10kbusinessstrategies.com. Uh, Pat, thank you so much for being on the show. I, it is my pleasure. <laughs> Immense pleasure, Jeff, to be here. Thank you so very much for having me. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.